In Activity 7, Liquid Conductors, students test several liquids to determine which are conductors. Students first construct a circuit to test the conductivity of liquids, and then test which liquids conduct electric currents. Finally, students classify liquids as conductors and non-conductors. You will need the following materials from the kit. Activity Sheet 7, D-cell batteries, battery holders, number 48 flashlight bulbs, bulb holders, conductors from Activity 6, plastic cups with lids, electrical clips, Fon stock clips, 15 centimeter insulated copper wire pieces, a container of baking soda, a roll of adhesive labels, and a bag of sugar. You will also need to provide paper towels and tap water. To prepare for the activity, make a copy of Activity Sheet 7 for each student. Review the activity sheets from Activity 6 to see which item proved to be the best solid conductor. Collect 16 samples of this item. Write water, salt, sugar, and baking soda on four labels for each team of two, and affix one label to each of the plastic cups. Make the solutions in the plastic cups. Add 60 milliliters of warm water to each of the cups, and add a quarter teaspoon salt, one and a half teaspoons baking soda, and one teaspoon sugar to each respectively labeled cup. Attach the lids and shake until everything is dissolved. Leave these solutions at a distribution station. Each team of two will need three batteries, three battery holders, one number 48 flashlight bulb, one bulb holder, six electrical clips, five pieces of insulated copper wire, a conductor, two Fon stock clips, one of each of the four types of liquids in the plastic cups, and some paper towels. To begin the activity, encourage students to recall which solids conducted an electric current in Activity 6. Ask students, do you think that liquids can conduct electric current? Students may already know that some liquids are conductors. Next, construct a three battery, one bulb circuit to test the liquids. Place the circuit next to one of the plastic cups of liquid. Show students how to attach the Fonstock clips to the wires by pushing down the tab on one Fonstock clip to expose the loop, then feeding the end of the wire through the loop and releasing the tab. Do the same for the other Fonstock clip. The ends of the wire with the Fonstock clips on them will be placed in the liquid about 3 centimeters away from one another. Help students understand that the electric current flows from the negative terminal of a battery through the bulb to one Fonstock clip, through the liquid to the other Fonstock clip, and back to the positive terminal of the battery. Ask students, what does the liquid need to be in order for this to be a complete circuit? Students should understand that the liquid must be a conductor of the electric current. Next, distribute a copy of Activity Sheet 7 to each student and the materials to each team. Help students construct their circuit testers for liquids. Discourage them from touching the Fonstock clips together, as this contact will drain the batteries and shorten the life of the bulb. Have students predict whether the plain tap water will conduct an electric current. Then, have them use their circuits to test the plain tap water and record their results on their activity sheets. Ask students, what do you think we could do to make the water conduct an electric current? Students may suggest putting some sort of conductive material in the water. Explain to students that a solution is a liquid that has material dissolved in it, and that in this activity they will test three solutions to see whether they conduct an electric current. A salt solution, a baking soda solution, and a sugar solution. Distribute the other labeled plastic cups of liquids to each team. For best results, have students gently shake each container just before removing the lid for testing. Instruct students to predict on their activity sheets which solutions will conduct an electric current and which will not. Students should then test each solution and record their results on their activity sheets. Make sure the students rinse the Fonstock clips in the cup of plain tap water after each test to remove any residual solution from the previous test. After they have completed their tests, discuss with students the results and ask, did each solution produce the same amount of brightness in the bulb? Students should have observed that each solution did not produce the same amount of brightness. Then ask, what did the different levels of brightness indicate? Help students understand that some solutions conduct more electric current than others. They should have observed that the salt solution was the best conductor, whereas the sugar solution was a non-conductor. Encourage students to recall the best solid conductors from Activity 6 and pass out one of the solid conductors. 
tell students to touch it to the two Fonstock clips and to compare the brightness of the bulb when using the solid conductor with the brightness of the bulb when using the salt solution. Ask students, why do you think the bulb was brighter with the best solid conductor than with the best liquid conductor? Students should conclude that metal is a better conductor than any liquid. Finally, let students know that in the next activity, electrical resistance, they will examine the flow of electric currents through wires of different thicknesses. To conclude the activity, have students return all batteries, battery holders, electrical clips, bulbs, bulb holders, and wires to the kit. Discard the liquids. Rinse the Fonstock clips in the plastic cups. Let them air dry and return them to the kit. For science background, reinforcement activities, curriculum connections, and information about the Delta Science Reader, please consult your DSM Teacher's Guide.